Welcome to True Grape. Uh, I'm here with Dylan Proctor, who is the ambassador for Penfolds Winery out of Australia. But uh, of recent, people may be familiar with Dylan because he was one of the uh, MS candidates in the independent film song. Uh, Dylan, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here, Govinder. How's everybody? How are you? <laughs> very good. Very, very Fantastic. good. Fantastic. Absolutely. Um, and it's interesting because we here in Edmonton uh, last night did uh, did the premiere of Edmonton premiere of uh, of Psalm and uh, Skype with you afterwards, which was fantastic. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. Um, tell us uh, how you got involved with that because uh, I think for some people, um, you know, the whole film industry is, yeah. is 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 a little bit out there. And when you get when you think about how difficult it is to to make a film, and when you think of Psalm as an independent film yeah. and an independent film about wine and the fact that it's been so successful and it's been so well received. Fortunately. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell us first about how you got in the industry and how you got involved with the movie. You know, beginning 15 years ago, I was just a guy working in restaurants. High school, sophomore, junior, senior. Took a little break from restaurants but found my way back into restaurants in Los Angeles in about 2001 and went back into the restaurant management side. But wine was always the constant. It kind of drug me back into it. I was always engaging to my tables, ingratiating them with stories, listening to their stories, and even saying, oh, yeah, I've been to Bordeaux. I hadn't been yet. Oh, I've been here. I hadn't been yet. But I always wanted to tell that story. Absolutely. And, and wine is the thing that allows you to tell that story. So it just it, it grabbed hold. Fantastic. And ever since, yeah, just... Uh, been, been thankfully living the dream of wine. So, Absolutely. Yeah. so how'd you get involved with the uh, with the movie? Believe it or not, it was it was not a casting process. It was not uh, should we pick these folks, these folks, these folks. It was very very organic. Four friends, three friends who met another friend, Brian McClintock, who was right. already friends with the director, right. Jason Wise. We were studying together, we were competing together in sommelier competitions, young sommelier competitions, top sommelier competitions, and. We just studied together. I lived in Dallas. I would use airline miles, parents' airline miles, my credit card. I'd fly to San Francisco twice a month just to study with my friends. Right, absolutely. Yeah, and just learn as much as we could, try to be the best tasters in the world. And we were together, so Jason Wise said, well, the four of you should, should be on camera. Right, right. After you know, at Brian's behest, if you Absolutely. will, asking asking Fred Dame if uh, we could be re you know recorded doing yeah. tasting. So Absolutely. it's kind of how it began. Yeah, it's it's interesting. The thing I really love about the movie is uh, not just the fact that uh, you know it's about the wine industry and those of us in the wine industry you know, can can very much relate to to that, but the fact that uh, I think it's it really resonates with anybody who's. Uh, pursuing a level of excellence in any field, in and anything. I think that's one of the reasons why it's been so successful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. Yeah. So uh, now you're with uh, Penfolds. Penfolds, absolutely. Yeah, fantastic company. You, we're coming up on our 170th anniversary. Right. So it's uh, looking forward to it. It's been a great time. I've had a wonderful time with Penfolds uh, and the company the last three years. I've enjoyed every bit. And at the end of the day. It's, I have a very fortunate position of being a very, very small custodian in this great brand. I'm entrusted, humbly entrusted, to preach and teach the gospel of Penfolds. Do it in the correct way, but I still be ingratiating and engaging to the guests and just tell that story, take them on a journey, explain the wines, the styles, talk a bit about Max Schubert and the mm -hmm. ethos, talk about Dr. Christopher Ross and Penfold and Mary Penfold founding Penfolds in 1844, mm -hmm. just eight years after the small big city it is now. That Adelaide Absolutely. was founded in 1836, so right. it's it's fun to do. Yeah. I, I love every bit of it. And phenomenal wines, and historically they've been great wines. Yeah. And uh, with the current winemaker Peter Gago, ah. uh, I, I think you know it's it just seems that Peter has uh, not just continued with the great quality, but in some ways, I think he's he's almost taken it to another level. <laughs> I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. Peter's uh, not, not not that Max Schubert and Don Ditter Absolutely. and John Duvall were not brilliant. They they Absolutely. are were. Absolutely. But but Peter Gago is he's he's a different human being. He's a different human being. Chemistry professor, math professor, just a brilliant guy, and he brings something to Penfold since becoming chief winemaker in 2002 that. Mm -hmm. You, you can't explain. Right, you right. can't explain. While still maintaining the legacy 
of Max Schubert. Absolutely. And Leslie Penfold Highland and Thomas, you know, Francis Highland and everyone. He right. still keeps that legacy that was set by Dr. Christopher Rawson and really put on a new path by right. Max Schubert. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Now, I mean, Penfold's, I think, has been uh, very well known over the years as being a winery that um, really kind of uh, put uh, multi district. Uh, blending at the forefront, absolutely, uh, and 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 doing it in a manner, but still maintaining some great quality. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think that, oh well, if you're just t taking some grapes here, taking you know, you're just doing a mishmash. Yeah. But uh, they really took it to a different level. Tell us a little bit about uh, the philosophy behind that. I'll, I'll, I'll simply put, it's very, it's easier for us to rely on vineyards that we've had generational mm -hmm. relationships mm -hmm. with and vineyards that we own. I mean, we own 4,500 acres in, 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 in South Australia. It's easy for us to deal with these relationships and vineyards that we own that have been around and established for a long time. You get consistency from these vineyards as opposed to relying on for, for wine like Grange, a wine like 707, relying on a single site, a single plot that in Australia, the dry continent country that it is, yeah. the drought-ridden country continent that it is, it's easier, we say, to, to rely on several vineyards to get that quality and consistency to build the brand and make the brand. Sure. You know, Max Schubert, when he took that visit to, to Europe to better understand sherry, <laughs> he ends up in Bordeaux with Christian Cruz, and he's tasting at Ponte Canet and Leoville Barton, Leoville Parfait, Lafitte Margot, and he Kim. And he's just shaking his head. He's like, how do they do it from one site? You know, and this is what Max knew at the time, right. you know, in Australia, yeah. separated from the world. Absolutely. But he's saying, how do they do it from one site? Right. You know, I've, I've, I, I, I do it from here, here, here. I know these sites. I can't rely on one site. Right. You know, simply put, simply put. So, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Well, let's uh, let's look at a couple of wines uh, from from the line. Uh, we have the uh, the 2010 Bin 128 uh, yes. Shiraz from Kunawara. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about uh, about what the what this wine's about. Bin 128 Kunawara Shiraz actually created in 1962. This is a wine that has been around, as I said, 62 for quite a long time. It relies and it's dependent upon that cool maritime climate of the limestone coast of Kunawara. This is the wine that originally started out with Sharam's Block in the 1962 vine uh, vintage. So it was single vineyard, of course, single region, single block. But now it's a wine that's morphed into a few fantastic blocks that we own in Kunawara, and it still brings that essence of cooler climate Shiraz fruit. The wine sees elevage in French oak, usually about 12 to 13 months. This particular vintage, the current release, 12 months in French oak. Second and third year, just a touch of it may be new, about 20%, right. but it's a beautiful wine that gives you those earthy and wonderful characteristics, but still, because it's pinfolds, has that buoyancy of fruit. Absolutely. Um, what would you uh, look at for food pairings with that? Oh, well, because I love the cool climate style of fruit, I, I actually just had Asabuco today. I think this would actually be an incredible wine to go with Asabuco. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's go to the, the, the 2008, the Bin 407 Cab Sauv from South Australia. Created as an entree tier, if you will, into Bin 707. Right. Now, we don't have any marketing materials behind the name Baby 707, but that's essentially what you're getting is Baby 707. 707 created in 64, this created in 1990 as that entry level to drink while you wait on your 707 to lay down. Absolutely. 707 was created from Barossa Valley fruit. This does have the ethos of Barossa Valley and McLarenville fruit, but we're also relying upon cool climate, limestone coast fruit, Kunawara, Robe, Rat and Bully, that gives you an absolute varietal characteristic of Cabernet Sauvignon for the 407. Usually 12 to 14 months as well, but French and American oak. Right. Just a kiss of new oak. Yeah. And maintains that beautiful freshness. Absolutely. Yeah. And always 100% Cabernet. Right. Always 100% Shiraz. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, uh, what would you pair with the... Uh... Short rib. Absolutely. Nice, 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 fantastic. So, um, tell us uh, what, uh, I mean, with the history that Penfolds has, um, what else can they do in the future? Is there, is oh, there, wow. is there something that, <laughs> that, that people can, can look forward to other than, you know, continuing uh, the, the great wines that they already know? But uh, uh, how is the, the company evolving? 
The company is, is always evolving, constantly evolving, but I'm sure you know we released the Ampule uh, one year ago in, in June of uh, 2012. We released the Ampule, only fashion 12 for the world, borosilicate glass designed by Nick Mount, hanging from a wonderful plume bomb, jar wooden cabinet, tungsten dipped scour to snip the, uh, the glass open and pour that wonderful block 42. I mean, we, we stay innovative with, with things like that. I mean, who knows? Who knows what the future holds for pinfolds, but uh, I can easily say, as you've, as you've read in Prior Rewards of Patience and, and, and the great book about Max Schubert, uh, you know, to pinfolds and evermore. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So uh, any more movies in your future? Nah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> if, if, if they like me and invite me, of there course, I'll... Uh, <laughs> Thanks so much. Gravinder, thank you kindly. Thank Pleasure. you very much. Happy to be here. Cheers. Thank you.